here at YouTube. Hope you're doing good. It's raining. I'm freezing out here in the barn. I wanted to get some more wire grass pulled in the garden and get some row cover cut, but that's not going to happen. I mean, I suppose it could, but it'd just be too... Just... I don't feel like doing it in the rain. Um, yeah. Uh, it's really cold. Um, anyways, this video is going to hopefully clear up and clarify all the confusion that apparently was brought to my eyes um, the other day when I posted about Paul spreading compost in his garden. Like I uploaded my previous video, or how I we'll see when this video goes out. But um, the video of Paul and I spreading compost in the garden um, really made a lot of people confused and kind of shocked that he's buying in compost and spreading it on his garden. So, yeah, I'm just going to talk about that today. Um, Anyways, I guess to start, when it comes to his garden, what he would try to do is use the chicken run compost as often as he can. He'd sift that out and then wheelbarrow it over to the garden, dump it, and get about half inch to an inch spread. And then he would typically top that off with sifted chips or a sifted compost wood chip base compost or yeah and um yeah because the chicken run compost is full of weed seeds if you think about it all the yard waste is going to the chicken run all the weeds we pull everything and then it's also at the back of the pasture and when the wind blows it all kind of just accumulates out there by the chicken coop and that's just a lot of weed seeds and the chickens don't eat all the seeds so um yeah, if you spread that compost out, you're going to have a weed problem unless you're on top of it and use certain tools that help maintain it really easily. That's why the whole, my two gardens out by the pond, um, I got them covered in about between two and four inches of the chicken run compost, and there's going to be weeds coming up. It's just kind of, that's just what happens. So I've got certain tools that'll help me, like, maintain it and then I actually I, I mean compared to Paul I can get out there and get a lot done relatively quick so it's not going to be as hard for me as it would be for him um, to maintain at this point he used to garden out there but uh, anyways chicken run compost is full of weeds so he would typically cover that with another material like a more coarse material other than compost so it would be sifted wood chips or a composted wood chip that's been sifted and the big particles have been taken out um, so yeah he was bringing in compost every other year he topped the garden and uh, um, yeah he would do half the garden one year and then the next year do the other half just because it's a big area and there's no need to do the whole garden all at once every other year. So I just kind of break it up, spread it out, make it not as big of a job. Um, but yeah, if you come here on a tour or whatever, and you come and look at his garden, you'll notice it's compost. There might be some bits of woody material in it, but that's just what you get in any good compost. Um, that woody material rises to the surface anyways. And yeah, like... If you compare his vegetable garden with the orchard, the orchard's covered in wood chips. That's always been covered in wood chips for 40 years, and, oh, maybe 30-something years, because he was using, um, like, old sheep bedding and stuff from a sheep farmer. He was putting that down to keep the weeds down, so that built up soil. Um, in years past, in his vegetable garden, he was using um, uh, this chicken compost from this chicken farm that was organic or all natural or whatever and uh, it was aged really really well it's weed free weed seed free and he was using that he was using horse bedding he was using all kinds of stuff so this garden isn't just wood chips okay like 
you've got to realize that. Um, now it, he uses a lot more wood chips than he did in the past, but he's got his soil built up on a diverse amount of organic matter or material. Um, and if you watch the film, you'll see this little clip where it shows the layers in a Back to Eden garden. You've got your native soil, and you've got your grass that you cut down really short, and you've got wood, or you've got cardboard, and then like some kind of compost, whether it's animal compost, mushroom compost, um, like plant-based compost, whatever, it's compost, okay? Um, the more diverse you make it, the better. So if you use animal, mushroom, and uh, yard waste compost, it's great, because then you've got that nice diverse organic material for your soil biology to thrive in. Um, and then you top all that off with some wood chips. And with a vegetable garden, you never want to go over more than four inches because it's just overkill and it's way more work for you and just not necessary. But anyways, that's not the point. Um, so I'm going to just go over these. I've got each type of compost and the difference between sifted chips and raw arborist chips that haven't been sifted and yeah. So. When you think of Back to Eden Garden, everybody wants to think of just wood chips. That's what these are. See, it's just, there's some bulky pieces in there. Let's see, I'm just gonna zoom in. There's some bulky pieces, there's little branches, there's some leaves and stuff. And then it gets down to the needles. Like, it's a whole diverse, like a diversity of sizes and stuff. But that's wood chips. Okay. So those are wood chips. Now this is sifted wood chips. You can see the difference. All the big bulky stuff has been taken out. They're sifted aged wood chips. This stuff is great as a ground cover. Um, like, it's just incredible. You put an inch or two inches of this stuff on top of the compost in your garden, and it's amazing. <clears throat> Back when Paul could walk better, he was sifting his own comp or his own wood chips and putting that down. But things change. And that's just what happens. So. <clears throat> That was sifted chips. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, now, this is the sifted wood chips that he was talking about. <clears throat> well, okay. So, I guess he never really made it too clear that he had to stop sifting his own wood chips. And he had to start buying in just because it was easier and more convenient for him. Um, but this is the stuff that he's now calling sifted wood chips. It's so what it is. He gets it from a local company that takes in everybody's yard waste and they tub grind it really fine. Actually, in the film, when um, you see him, like he goes up to a uh, like a composting place that has a big tub grinder and he's talking about the tub grinder and the product they make. He's standing by his truck with his rake, talking to the guy. He says, like, track with me or whatever. And um, to, and the guy's like, yeah, my roses love it. And then Paul goes, yeah, everything loves it. But this is basically the same material. It's tub-grinded yard waste. And, like, I really just don't... I mean, it's great if this is all you've got. Um, kind of just going to have to pray over it. But um, you don't know what's in this because this is just coming from any household like or any little homeowner that could be spraying a ton of roundup on their garden and then in the fall or whenever they go and clean up stuff and um need a place to dump it so they take it to this guy and they tub grind it so this potentially could have roundup it could have um just any kind of pesticides herbicides 
uh, anything really could be in this. You don't know, and there's no there's no saying what's in this. Um, so yeah, if you have the ability to avoid this, do it. Like find something else. And this was all that Paul knew. Like he didn't know there was any other places around here selling good quality compost. So this is what he was using for the last few years. And um, yeah, like he used what he had, and that's that's what you have to do. But uh, so yeah, this is just a fine sift. There's some bits of like bigger woody pieces, but that's that. Um, so once I got here, I was really like keeping my ears peeled, eyes peeled, ears peeled, whatever, and um, I was looking for other sources of compost. And that's where I found this compost, which is a diverse compost, which includes pasture grazed um, cattle manure, it's their bedding, which is an organic straw, and uh, like hay, old hay, um, uh, what else? It's uh, alder shavings, so it's really finely like it's basically alder sawdust from a mill and uh, then it's organic yard waste which would be leaves and grass clippings from um, I think it's all made on his farm the majority of it um, and then biochar that was the last ingredient he puts his own biochar in this mix but uh, it's just a local guy he's just producing all this compost as a byproduct of his cattle business and yeah like this is really good stuff I like it it's like I just really like it um, but anyways uh, this is the new compost so there is wood matter in this there's manure there's all that good stuff. It's a nice diverse compost and that's what you want. So there's no problem with taking this, laying it over your garden an inch to two inches thick, and then coming back and putting sifted chips on top. That's amazing. That's great. Like I encourage you to do that. Um, but yeah, Paul just uses this just because why spend the time sifting chips and put it on top if you don't have to. He's already got that soil built up and it doesn't get too hot here in, it, um, in the summer and so there's really no need to like hold so much water in the soil like you would if you were down south or something. Um, if you were down south I'd definitely use sifted chips or even just the raw chips. Um, either or are great. This is easier to plant in than the, uh, the bigger chunkier stuff. But, um, yeah, so this is the new compost that you saw in the video that I posted of us spreading the compost. And what's kind of cool is we spread three yards of this, which is the, um, the, uh, sifted wood chips that he was talking about. This is the composted yard waste from the yard waste facility. We spread three yards of this, or four yards, I don't remember, over part of the garden, and then six yards of this on the other part. And so we'll kind of do like a comparison. We'll see what grows better with the yard waste or the actual compost with biochar. Um, and then this lovely stuff is the compost from Paul's chicken coop and you can see there's weeds in it like that looks like a chamomile that sprouted up but this is basically really nice soil and really nice soil does have weed seeds in it so yeah that's that's all this is it's just all the yard waste from Paul's garden from cutting the grass and whatever else all goes to the chickens and they compost it and scratch it up and 
So this is actually a cold compost. I guess I should mention that. Um, being that it's just laid on the ground and it doesn't get turned to heat up at all and the chickens scratch it up, this just is more of like a natural cold compost. Now this, when it's a cold compost, the weed seeds don't die. But, um, no, not this one. This one, I guess, and this one. So the compost with biochar and then the yard waste material, they're both piled up and they're turned pretty often and they're allowed to heat up to a significant like amount of heat in each pile and that kills the majority of the weed seeds now sure you might get some that blow in and sit on top of the pile or whatever but um yeah there's going to be less weed seeds significantly less weed seeds in either of these two products compared to his chicken compost so that's why he would cover, like when he was using the chicken compost, he would put this down and then top it off with something. And this would be your weed suppressor. So two inches of the sifted chips like he was doing back in the day on top of one to two inches of the chicken run compost. And then it's good. You don't have as many weed seeds germinating. Um, he did have a bigger weed problem when he was using this, though. That's kind of why he slowed down. Another reason why he slowed down on using it. But, uh... Yeah, so I hope that helps kind of clarify everything. I'm sure there's some stuff I forgot, um, but I'm going to include some pictures and uh, I can talk about that. So um, my garden back in Maryland was covered in just this coarse raw arborist wood chips and it was layered so it was a layer of okay so I have my my like native soil and then I have my grass that I cut down really short and then I put uh, contractors paper on top of the grass then I did an inch to two inches of aged horse manure and then on top of that I put a layer of like old rotten hay just because it I mean there were some weed seeds in it but they weren't a problem um, I did the old rotten hay about maybe three inches thick and I did all this like late summer early fall and then I topped it off with about two to three inches of wood of this the whole bulk barky not barky bulky size wise um, wood chip material and uh, so I topped the garden off with that and then I just let it sit all winter I didn't really have a weed problem there was some wire grass in some spots that popped up but I pulled that throughout the summer and um, had an incredible garden that's a first year garden you don't have to wait two three years before you can garden in a back to Eden garden it's not necessary if you use good compost and if you are smart about putting down the amount of wood chips so like I said never any more than four inches in a garden in an orchard you can go as deep as you want depending on how old and big your trees are um, but uh, yeah so that's just proof that you can have a thriving incredible back to eating garden the first year if you do it the right way um, and there's a lot of confusion on it like if I had time, I would set up a small back to Eden garden and start from converting the pasture into a, a dual little gar garden in the pasture or something. And I don't know, maybe I'll do that this fall. I think that'd be a cool video. I'll do like a little 10 foot by 10 foot like section just as a demonstration. And um, yeah, so. I had a nice thriving back to eating garden with big bulky chips. You don't need to use the sifted chips. The sifted chips are much easier to plant into, but uh, like if you don't want to sift them, go for it. Use the big bulky stuff. That's what I did. I didn't want to sift all the, the chips to cover two inches on a, I think it was like a 1600 square foot garden. Um, yeah, I, just, I wasn't up for it didn't have the time either so I just used the big bulky stuff and that's great um, what I did have to do though was rake the chips aside 
and then plant into the compost or native soil. So I'll actually grab a piece of paper. Hold on. Okay, so let's see, we've got our native soil. And then we'll have a layer of cardboard. And then compost. And then two to four inches chips. Okay, so let's see. So you've got your native soil and you've got your layer of cardboard, which like smothers out the weeds and grass seed in your native soil. And you've got a layer of compost, which is two to three inches of compost or more if you can afford it. Um, or have enough being made on property or on site and then you top the compost off with your wood chips you can use the bulky sip the bulky wood chips which are just basically the raw chips that you'd get fresh dumped from an arborist or you can sift it and put about two inches of sifted chips on top of your compost it just depends it's all preference you can experiment do whatever you want so that's what your garden would look like it's basically like a lasagna. And then when it comes time to plant, my fingers are so dirty and freezing cold, but I will. Um, when it comes time to plant, you've got your native soil, do NS for native soil. Um, when you're setting up your garden, you do that in the fall. So then come spring, your cardboard's all composted down. So then you're left with just compost and then wood chips on top. And what you're going to want to do Whatever. This is such. I'm an. I'm actually an artist, so don't judge. I can do a lot better than this. Um. So, in the spring, you want to rake aside your wood chips and a little bit into your compost and plant right into that, and then leave it until your plants come up. So you'll have your native soil, then your layer of compost, and then your uh, wood chips. And when you rake it, you're making a little trench down your row, getting down to that compost layer and and or your native soil, depending on how much compost. If you have more than two inches, then you can plant right in the compost, whatever. Um, so you just rake all that stuff aside on either side of your row, or if you're just planting transplants just around where your transplant's going to go, put it in the soil or the compost and then just leave it. As the plant grows, gravity works, and these wood chips in the little piles or whatever will end up falling back into the hole, but that's down the road when your plant can withstand it anyways. So, uh, yeah, you're not plant, you never want to plant right into, hold on. You never want to plant right into the wood chips. Bad idea, don't do it. No one tells you to do that, and if they do, don't listen to them, because it doesn't work. That's where you tie up nitrogen. That's where your plants start turning yellow, and that's where your garden just sucks. And that's where everybody wants to badmouth the method, because they didn't do it right. So, um, 
yeah. <laughs> um, real quick, I'm going to talk about, uh, like, my, the other video I did about building my rows in my garden. I talked about, um, I mentioned, I guess, that wood chips are just a whole extra step and kind of a hassle and it can be a pain. If you're doing just row crops every, maybe, say you're doing, okay, we'll just use Paul's garden as an example, it's perfect. Um, his rows, I don't know if you ever pay attention to it, they're two rake heads apart, so it's about mm, two, two and a half feet apart. And the reason he does that is because back in the day when he was tilling his garden for 17 years, in order to keep the weeds down, he'd till in between his rows every blah blah blah, however often, I don't know. Um, whenever the weeds started getting bad, he'd run the tiller right in between his crops. <clears throat> and, like, that kind of set the distance of his rows in his head, and that's just what he's always used. So it's just two rake heads apart and a row on each side. Um, but with my garden over here, and the ones out by the pond, I'm doing more of a market garden system where I have a 30 inch bed and then crops planted really close and or planted in rows really close together. So it's a bio-intensive method and the plants actually become the ground cover. So like if you do lettuce, it's six inches apart square. So you've got four lettuce plants on the corners of a six inch square. And uh, yeah, so the weeds would never, like, by the time the lettuce is big and growing, it's covering the ground, or covering the compost, and the weeds won't have enough light to germinate and survive. Um, so my plants are my ground cover. Uh, and then when it comes to, like, planting and direct seeding and stuff, it's so much easier just to rake into compost than it is to have to rake especially in a bio-intensive method where you're using your rows, say, six inches apart. If you have to rake two inches deep into this, the sifted wood chips, or just big bulky wood chips to get to your compost, it just doesn't work. It's a hassle. Um, so just having good compost is all you need. Um, just like Charles Dowding no-dig method. Um, he just uses compost. Um, so yeah. In Paul's garden, though, that's why it worked for him really well to use the sifted chips and to cover his garden, the sheep are whining, um, with this. Because he only did one row every two, two and a half feet. Um, so just experiment, see what works for you, see what you like best. That's what's really important. Who cares what everybody else is doing? Who cares what I'm doing? Who cares what Paul's doing? It doesn't matter take the advice that we give you and we offer and like if you see that our gardens are working there's stuff that is beneficial to what we're doing it works and use bits and pieces of it and apply it to your own garden not just us but like everybody like just like just like your soil and your compost you want it to be diverse not just one thing like your soil biology has to be diverse like it's just life's boring when it's not diverse so diversify your gardening methods and create your own method see what works best for you and stick with what you like and that's all i can really say at this point um too many people want to just make a replica of paul's garden but you're never going to do that you will never replicate paul's garden because of like, the film's only eight years old. You don't know what all went into his garden. Like, all the different layers of chicken compost and manures and blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, it's just... It's a bunch of stuff built up. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I really hope this helped clear things up for you guys. Um... It just popped in my head. Um, I do want to make sure you know. Okay, so the video cut off. Um, I was just pointing out 
or I guess I was mentioning the fact that other people pointed out that Paul does buy in stuff and he gets stuff from off the farm and they were all kind of like what Paul's not Paul doesn't do that blah 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 they just everybody's confused um I just want you to know and realize that if Paul didn't get stuff from off the farm he would have never gotten wood chips at least he's never owned a chipper in his life so having access to wood chips would be eliminated if he was against getting stuff off the farm so just want to throw that in there compost is the same thing it's not sinful to go and get compost from off the farm if you don't have enough like he hasn't had enough in in the past with his chickens um so yeah i mean the chickens they like it's been a little bit since he's covered his garden with chicken compost so that compost has definitely accumulated over the last few years but uh yeah <laughs> i don't know i hope this video helped you if it did, smash that thumbs up button and uh, share it. Hopefully it helps other people too, if your friends are confused. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, happy gardening.